Yes, sir. Call the meeting order. After clerk, call the roll. Mayor Williams. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Marshburn. I'm present. Councilmember Berenger. Here. Councilmember Kennedy. Here. Councilmember Singleton. Here. And Councilmember Vance. Here. Okay. Next on the agenda is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll stand and join me, place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor and fellow council members, in, uh, in lieu of having our formal invocation this evening, I thought it would be appropriate for us to, um, to pause and remember the tragedy that happened in Virginia Beach, especially since it influenced uh, a municipality there and there were uh, any number of folks who tragically lost their life. So uh, this evening, what I'd like to do is uh, ask this assembled group, if, if you are inclined and can, to stand and like for us to just uh, Remember these folks uh, through a moment of silence, uh, and then I will conclude that for us, if you would do that at this time. <clears throat> Our Father, may all those who uh, have suffered from this terrible, terrible tragedy and the families that are left. Would you envelop them with your love and your care? We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Next on the agenda, petition and comments. Time on the agenda for anyone to address the council on anything that's not on the agenda. If you wish to address the council, come to the podium, state your name and address. Hearing not, we'll go to uh, adoption of the agenda. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, um, I would approve the, uh, I would move we approve the adoption, uh, uh, excuse me, of the agenda, but I'd like to, uh, if I could, add a um, closed session uh, at the end of the agenda in regards to a personnel matter. Second. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Presentation, do we have any? Yeah. Move to approve. Second. Motion made second. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. We got one public hearing. Session 1903. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. This is a, an annexation petition. Uh, this is for the Buffalo Springs project, which was a, a conditional use permit, which was approved in January. The site's on Buffalo Road. Uh, the total acreage is around 23 acres. Uh, zoning is MF1 Conditional Use District, uh, District C 207. And uh, we did run an ad in the News and Observer to meet the legal requirement. And this is a, vic a vicinity map of the, of the annexation site outlined in orange. Tiffany Woods is located to the north. Uh, breezeway subdivisions located to the southeast and this is a, a survey map of the site 
and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And this was a requirement of approval for the conditional use permit. Move we adopt ordinance number 2019-3975, approving the annexation. Second. Motion made say all in favor of say aye. Annexation 1904, David. This is another annexation pe petition, and this is regarding a site on Dynamic Drive. Uh, the address is. I cannot remember what the address is, but it's uh, owned by, by Vic Bird. And this is regarding a, a site permit application that is pending, uh, SP 17-19, and this is also a requirement of approval. The site's 5.5 acres in size. It's zone service business. Uh, we did run an, an, a legal ad in the News and Observer and the public hearings tonight. And this is a vicinity map of the location outlined in orange. Here, and this is Mechanical Boulevard, and Timber Drive is located to the west. And this is a survey map of the annexation boundary. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Question. Yes, sir. Although he's not uh, connected to the front mechanical, Mr. Bird has access through an adjacent lot on the side, so. We don't have that issue to contend with down the road, do we? As far as access? Yes. No, sir. This, uh, this tract is part of this tract here. So this is, um, this is all one piece. It's just that the front portion here is inside the town limits and the rear portion is outside the town limits. So it's all one, one tract. Good. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, I'm going to move adoption of ordinance 2019-3976, the annexation petition submitted Second. by Big Bird. Second. 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 All in favor, vote with Santa. Aye. Aye. Bill, we've skipped over the public hearing on the previous application. Yes, sir. Yes. On the annexation for Buffalo Springs. Best council on that. Yeah, I have anything. Public hearing is open and closed. <coughs> That's on annexation. Bird property. Press up, Mr. Mayor. We need to go next to the to the, <coughs> to the budget. Okay. Third, uh, thirdly, it's. Uh, there is the budget public process. Michael. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Tonight we'll have the second public hearing for the FY19, FY20 recommended budget. So in terms of the overview, we're going to go over the recommended budget. We've obviously taken some steps since we originally released the recommended budget, but we'll go through it just to get us to where we are now. Then we'll review some potential changes to the recommended budget, <coughs> and then finally talk about some future budget dates. So the recommended budget had several major themes. Um, the budget was a first step in a multi-year process to address some structural issues that we <coughs> identified as part of a multi-year review. As part of that review, we realized that growth and core requirements would exceed available revenues despite continued growth in revenues. And that was looking at baseline operating requirements. So the cost of baseline costs such as group insurance increases for personnel, raises, um, baseline increases in operations as well. So once we realized we had that structural deficit, we considered a variety of different options within the recommended budget to balance it. One being to kind of try to fix it within one year, which would be a very large tax increase. One being to kind of just try to scrape by and figure out and work on it throughout the next year. 
what we ultimately decided to put put forward was a balance of all those different options. So a tax increase as well as some reductions and some deferrals and some use of one-time funds to balance the budget. Using that approach, we were able to meet most of the core requirements that were required based on some critical needs, but there were still many requirements that were not addressed that we felt as staff that were deserved. <coughs> Some budget highlights, the property tax rate was recommended to increase by three cents from 53.25 cents to 56.25 for $100 of assessed value. The budget included five new positions and it also included reductions of almost $417,000 in unfunded decision packages or new items totaling over 1.5 million. So the multi-year forecast was something that started the budget process to a certain extent in terms of uh, getting us to where we are now. It was originally designed to be a new tool prepared by staff to review baseline funding requirements. Again, baseline would be no new items, just the cost of doing business in future years. And the hope was that it would help ensure that the town is positioned to address future requirements as time goes on and to match ultimately expenditures with future requirements with the revenues that are available. And as we were doing this forecast, again, we identified a structural deficit. This next slide highlights the structural deficit more clearly. So as you can see in the FY20 budget, when we started the year off, we had a $1.45 million shortfall. So that means that resources were exceeded by expenditures by 1.45 million. And this did not, again, include any new items. It was just what departments had originally requested and our original um, predictions in terms of revenues. Our staff went through the multi-year forecast. We identified a variety of different issues on the um, expenditure side that were driving this. So several things that were out of town, the town's control because they were based on mandates or just the cost of doing business with growth. So some of those items included the cost of $163,000 in this year's budget to cover the cost of upcoming elections, funding of nearly $184,000 to cover solid waste costs primarily associated with customer growth, significant funding for new items and new town facilities and properties, funding of nearly $134,000 to cover increased contribution rates for uh, town employees retirement system, and then we had $437,000 to cover merit-based salary adjustments and positions approved out of cycle. One thing that was not noted here, and there was not an increase in this year's budget, but another item of note is that over the last four years, the town had absorbed $950,000 of group insurance rate increases. So there are a variety of those different drivers of the budget on the expenditure side that have put us in a challenging position. In addition, we made a variety of different strategic decisions that led to this situation as well. So funding of $365,000 was redirected to support street resurfacing efforts. And this was based on a consultant study that determines that the amount of funding the town was putting forward for resurfacing efforts was insufficient. And even with this amount of funding being redirected, we're still projected to slightly decrease in terms of the road's grade as time goes on. So it's still not sufficient, but it's a good step forward. And we are also in the process of getting rid of debt financing for vehicles. So in the past, as we needed new vehicles, we would finance them and then pay off the loan. And now we are in the process of both paying off the loans that we have from our existing purchases, but also covering the full cost of new vehicles. So that's creating it. <coughs> A situation where we're spending more on the total cost of vehicles than we would have in the past. Next slide has some revenue highlights. So the increase in townwide assessed property <coughs> value was 190.7 million or 5.5 percent, a little over $301,000 in sales tax, an increase of $130,000 in interest income, an increase of almost a little over $102,000 in recreation fees, and an increase of $90,000 in motor vehicle fees. So this was another issue where staff was looking at the revenue and trying to figure out why exactly we were having robust revenue growth, but it wasn't sufficient to offset the cost of rising expenditures. And as staff began to look into this, we started to review this chart that everybody is seeing from the city of Raleigh. The city of Raleigh compiles this on an annual basis, but what they do is assume that every locality, every municipality listed on the left-hand side has the same value, home value, as the houses in the city of Raleigh. So for the town of Garner, our average home value is going to be less 
than what the city of Raleigh is, where a different locality, perhaps Apex or Cary, might have a higher value, so it wasn't accurately reflecting the impact to tax um, payers within localities. So what the town did was, using GIS, look at all the different municipalities and figure out the average tax value of all the different homes in the municipality and apply that to this chart. And when you do that, it ends up being that Garner, the average uh, household tax impact is the lowest in the, re the region. A couple other things I would point out here. A lot of folks look at the property tax rate being fairly high, but they also don't look at the annual solid waste fees side. If you look, most municipalities are charging on a monthly or quarterly basis some sort of fee to account for the, mis the solid waste cost, but that fee is um, within the, the property tax rate in Garner. So if you just took that out and we were just billing for solid waste, it'd be approximately six cents of a reduction. The town also doesn't have an annual stormwater fee, so there are a variety of those type types of things that lower the impact for the average household in Garner. This next slide shows the budget summary based on the three cent tax increase. So the largest piece of growth is the 2.808 million in property tax, but driven by growth, but also by the, the, the rate increase. Permits and fees increasing 559,000, and that's primarily the motor vehicle fee. Sales tax and other taxes increasing $311,000, primarily based on sales tax. Intergovernmental with a slight decline, and that was based primarily on the way we're budgeting for grant revenues in the next year's budget. In the past, we actually budgeted for it, and then we'd have to change the budget as the grants came in. Moving forward, we'll just adjust the budget as, as the grants come in, and it's more accurate, because at that point, you actually know how much you're adjusting, as opposed to just estimating for some unpredictable grants. Fees for service is, has an increase of 122,000 almost for primarily recreation fees. Interest earnings increasing as well, based on the current market conditions and then other financing sources decreasing by $447,000, primarily based on a decrease in appropriated fund balance usage. As I mentioned, the town then took some additional balancing measures. So again, we had reductions of $417,000 and unfunded decision packages totaling over $1.5 million. And we also utilized appropriated fund balance of $626,000 to meet one-time requirements. That was a reduction, but we still did use some of that to, uh, to meet some one-time needs. Using these strategies, we were able to meet most of the core requirements within the town. So the next several slides go over the various decision packages that were funded. So the first slide summarizes some positions in public works. The first position being a parks and ground supervisor. This position was identified in the 2016-2017 K and class study as a need. And basically, the managers within this division were so overloaded with doing administrative functions associated with um, managing personnel and other administrative tasks that they weren't able to actually get into the field and manage activities. So this position will allow the division to address that. We've also included a building maintenance technician. The town's overall footprint has grown significantly and the recreation center will come online next year. So this will allow um, the facilities management division to keep up with that growth in the town's building footprint. 95,000 was for a construction inspector. This position will ensure that the work of both public and private projects is being completed properly. So as the town continues to see development on both the public and private side, this position will help make sure that that work is being done um, correctly. $50,000 is for the final installment for the Uni Unified Development Ordinance rewrite. Then we had $45,000 for the Garner Economic Development Corporation. This will allow them to transition from being a singular focus entity to a townwide economic development nonprofit. Almost $36,000 for two police grant positions. These are based on growth in the town's overall population, but also the land footprint. And as we continue to grow and have more people, we will need to continue to add positions to meet the, the current um, service demands and meet the same, to provide the same level of service. In addition, the department anticipates receiving a grant that will cover 85% of the year one cost. And this will allow us to buy a lot of the big time, big ticket one-time <clears throat> items that come, or one time for intermittent costs, um, such as a police car and the various equipment that is associated with outfitting officer. So that'll uh, be a significant savings for the town. We also have $9,000 to cover WRAL campaign. 
These costs are associated with running a six-month series of promotional articles about the town on the WRAL website. And then almost $9,000 for a middle school camp. The, the town's current camp, Camp Kaleidoscope, was at max capacity and also includes both middle school age kids and some younger kids. So adding this additional camp will enhance capacity but also allow there to be a camp for middle school kids and for younger children so they can socialize with people in their peer group. And I would also point out that the net cost when you factor in revenue that'll be generated by the camp is almost is $2,300, so not a significant cost. So the final summary of the recommended budget, as I mentioned, it takes a critical step forward putting the operating budget on a sound financial footing. So it's that first step in the process of, of addressing the structural issues that we noted earlier. Tax increases are necessary based on a combination of market forces, increasing demand, and unfunded mandates, which have forced spending increases. So those budget drivers that we cost about, talked about, the things that we're required to do based on growth, the things that we're just required to do based on mandates, are really driving our cost. It allows us to maintain a high level of service at the lowest per household cost in Wake County, and this is even after the tax increase is factored in based on the chart I showed previously and it provides needed investments in core town services and infrastructure. So it allows us to meet the needs that we have to provide service. We move forward into future budgets. We'll continue to utilize the multi-year forecast to ensure that we're in a, the correct position and we're thinking about future years and what we're gonna be able to do and that we're gonna be in a correct position to address future needs. And we're gonna review funding priorities to ensure the town is investing in areas of a strategic importance. So we're gonna make sure that we're putting the money in the places that we should be putting it. All right, so that summarizes the recommended budget. Since that time, there have been a variety of events. So I'm just gonna provide a quick summary and get us to where we're at today. So on May 17th, 7th, we had a budget work session, an all day long work session, where we reviewed the budget in detail and obtained feedback from council. And then on the 21st of May, we had a special budget work session where we provided a variety of potential revenue enhancements and other reductions that could have been utilized to either create additional revenue or to reduce cost within the budget just to provide council some different options. And coming out of that meeting, we had direction to provide various budget scenarios to just give a sample of the types of things we could do to lower the tax rate and what we could still fund. This next slide summarizes those scenarios. The first one is a two and a half cent increase, so a reduction from the three cent increase by half a penny. So you can see on the top side, the tax reduction is $182,000, so that's the impact of going from three cents to two and a half cents. Then we have an increase in real estate tax collection rate, an increase in interest income estimate, and then a small increase in the amount of appropriated fund balance utilized to balance the budget. Utilizing this approach, we'd be able to fund the pay in class study, which will likely be right around the $150,000 mark. We're still in the process of putting the final touches on that, but um, it should be right in that ballpark if about a little bit less. It does not allow us to fund the fire position for a half year to reinstate communications reductions. We also, as part of this scenario, did appropriate or plan on appropriating FY18-19 revenues to purchase budgeted items. So this was the items in police and public works it's the money we received from New Bern for the work performed during the hurricane, and those two departments were gonna purchase some one-time items. It was also gonna allow communications to purchase some various equipment and inspections and planning to make some initial purchases of, um, of some supplies and various other items utilizing um, revenues associated with their department. We were also gonna use the economic, unclaimed economic incentive funding to cover GEDC cost, the year one cost of adding GEDC, we're gonna eliminate funding for snow salt and public works. So this was gonna require us to potentially purchase salt if we had a, um, a significant, multiple significant snowstorms during the winter. It would require us to defer four police vehicles. And that's that last line and ultimately ending up in a balanced budget. The next scenario is a two and three quarters tax increase. So a 25 or a quarter of a penny decrease from the three cents. So. On the revenue side, you see the tax rate reduction. It's a little bit less in lost revenue based on it being a slightly higher tax increase. We'd recommend the same two revenue enhancements. And then we'd also be reducing fund balance usage in this scenario by $21,000 as opposed to increasing it. We'd also fund the pay in class study. 
This scenario allows us to fund the fire position for a half year, also reinstate communications reduction. We just take the same approach with appropriated the money for FY18 of FY1819 revenues to cover FY1920 requirements. The same approach with the GEDC. We would not eliminate funding for snow salt, and we would also defer four police vehicles. The final scenario, the three cent tax increase, <coughs> would obviously have no change in terms of the tax rate reduction. And then we would take the same approach with the two revenue enhancements, and we would be able to reduce fund balance usage by $42,000. We would then take the same approach with the pay and class study, the fire position, the communications reduction, as well as the FY1819 revenue, GDC, and ultimately the only other change would be deferring two police vehicles of the seven originally recommended as opposed to four. So with that, those are the budget scenarios. What we have upcoming in terms of the schedule, on June 18th, it's proposed council adoption. So on the 18th, I will come back and we will hopefully be adopting the budget. And then August 15th would be published in the adopted budget and budget <laughs> brief, so formally publishing it and putting it out there, uh, for the public to review. So with that, I'll take any questions. Question. Uh, earlier it says we've got maybe $385,000 dedicated to paying off debt uh, for VERT, how many more years will we have of that uh, paying off debt? There's two more years in, before all the loans are paid off. So FY21, we would have a payment. FY, FY23, I believe, would be the first year that we wouldn't have a payment. Will they be reductions in succeeding years, or will they be the same? It'd be the same year. Both our loans would come off. There was a a mix up in terms of when they were paid initially and there was a different schedule. So I believe they will both come off the books in FY22. And then we'd be debt free in FY23. It'll still be that 385 for the next two years. It'll come down slightly, but yes, it'll still be two loans existing for the next two years, I believe. Yeah, thank you. Mike, in scenario two, which is the one that I think I personally favor that includes a 2.75 cent increase. And both that one and the three cent increase does incorporate the uh, fire position for a half year, um, which I'm inclined to favor, in spite of the fact that there are other departments that um, we weren't able to authorize positions. But at any rate, um, if, um, Obviously, if we don't replace any of the police vehicles and, and that scenario uh, leaves out, is it four vehicles, I believe? Yes, sir, it would be four of the seven that we okay. originally recommended. So, so, so looking ahead to future year budgets, if we're trying to keep up with the VERT process there, we'll have to either double up or in some form or fashion uh, try to, in future years, uh, make up the difference. Um, um, and I guess I'm trying to determine in my own mind what's a, what's a reasonable way to do that. Um, obviously, that's going to be an added cost in future budgets, but uh, and I'm sure the police department would like to have all the replacements at one time, but um, place two in successive budgets, I don't know if that gets us all the way caught, uh, caught up because there will be other needs in future years, or, or is it likely you can do it that way? We, yeah, we're not suggesting that we would get rid of the vehicle, so at some point we would definitely have to replace them. The current replacement schedule of about seven vehicles per year is about a 10-year life cycle for each police vehicle, and based on the criteria we established as part of VERT, that's on definitely the higher ends. So um, we'd likely at some point have a year where we'd have to place, replace more than seven vehicles at one time, and that would have an impact on the VERT program and obviously the funding. Anyone else? With the uh, grant that's going to be allowed for the two new officers, the grant will cover <coughs> the cost of the vehicles for the two new officers, correct? 85% of it. Well, okay. I think one thing we discussed, though, it would cover all the equipment they would need, including the vehicles, right? Yeah, it covers 85% of the year one cost for salary, equipment, anything that we're going to need to outfit those two officers. I mean, oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and then we pick up full salaries next year. I believe the schedule was we pick up 50% the following year and then... Um, 5%, right. And it, 15, 15, 75? 85. Yeah, it does go down, but there's a two more year period where we're receiving a portion of the funding for the salaries. Here now we'll close close this public hearing. Well, well uh, just a minute. <laughs> um, Dan, remind me. I, I don't know if it was you, Michael, or somebody cited. Uh, it's always a, at least a little interesting to to understand how the average citizen is impacted by, for instance, a, a two and three quarters penny increase. Mm -hmm. I guess it's based on the average uh, uh, average cost of a house in the in the Garner area. Uh, how much does that add to the tax bill? Eighty-five dollars. Much? Sixty-five? Did he say? Average cost. If the average house cost or value is uh, taxed at two hundred thousand, then uh, it's twenty dollars for a penny. So it's fifty-five dollars. Fifty-five. Okay. Five dollars a month. I think that's all I have for now. Okay, Not as one. Well. There you public go. I want to see if there's any members of the public want to be heard on this. Yeah, I'll close that public here. Open it up. All right, so the next public hearing is on the economic development budget. So the one page I have up summarizes the full economic development budget for the economic development department. So you have the economic development budget total, ultimately 248,125 as part of the manager recommended budget. And you have the economic development partners budget, ultimately 97,869 in the recommended budget, primarily increased by the $45,000 we're putting towards the GDDC ultimately resulting in a $345,994 budget as part of the recommended budget. Um, and that is a 14.4% increase over FY18, FY19, and that increase is primarily the result of the $45,000 included for the GDC. Michael, could you comment and state why the $45,000 is required for the GDC to keep its nonprofit status? Yes, sir. By the government regulations. Yes, sir. What we're going to use instead of using new new dollars is we're going to use dollars that weren't spent in this year's budget. Okay, I call a meeting back to to order after a recess. For those of you who may be watching uh, via Facebook. Our mayor um, is, is, is okay, um, and uh, he's going to go ahead and take the rest of the night off, and uh, we're going to get him back to his house and let him rest and relax a little bit. So we'll continue the meeting. Mr. Vance is assisting him right now, but he will rejoin us shortly. So um, I'm going to go back and sort of formally open the uh, public hearing as it relates to the, um, to the budget for economic development. Yes, sir. Mike, you were in the midst of that, I believe. So if you want to resume at this time, that would be a proper thing to do. Yes, sir. So just high level notes again. Um, so the, the total increase of the FI 1920 economic development budget is recommended uh, to be a little over $43,000, $43,580 or 14.4% over last year's adopted budget. And that is primarily related to the $45,000 for the GEDC, which is required for them to maintain their nonprofit status. Um, and required by, by federal law to maintain their nonprofit status. With that, if there are any questions. Council member, any questions, comments? 
Also, since this is a public hearing, if there are any folks uh, in attendance who care to uh, make a comment, now would be a good time to come forward. Okay. Uh, hearing none, I believe we don't need a formal vote on this uh, this time. I'm going to close the public hearing, and we'll move to the next item. I believe uh, we are now uh, on the agenda under new and old business, and Mr. Treasonberg is next up. Amendment 2, Swift Creek Land Management uh, Plan. Uh, it's all yours, Mr. Treasonberg. Yes, good evening, Mayor Patem, members of the council. Um, tonight, we have before you a proposed amendment number two to the Swift Creek Land Management Plan, uh, which uh, was adopted back into state law in the 90s. Um, if you'll recall, the town of Garner initiated the very first amendment to that plan last year, uh, where we requested the reclassification of some properties down along the 401 corridor. <laughs> Uh, to allow for some denser development uh, in places in, in recognition of the fact that we had actually lowered our, uh, the intensity of development in other areas within the greater Swift Creek uh, watershed. This request comes from the county um, on behalf of the Wake County School System. Uh, what you see here up on your screen is the southeast corner of Yates Mill and Tryon Roads. Uh, so this is a considerable uh, distance from the town of Garner, but since we are a signing member uh, of the land management plan, everybody has to agree to these amendments when proposed. Um, so you see here the larger Swift Creek watershed area. Here's Yates Mill Pond and Tryon Road, Garner proper, is over here along the 401 corridor. So again, a considerable distance. Um, the request is to take uh, these parcels from rural designation to new urban designation, uh, which allows for a higher amount of uh, impervious surface, which uh, they would need to actually construct the school on the property. There is existing new urban on both the other sides of Tryon Road and Yates Mill Pond Road, so it's not a tremendous stretch to go ahead and ask for this corner to be incorporated as well. This will be a small school with a fairly small uh, footprint. It is specifically for uh, children in grades uh, 6 through 12 for the special needs population. Uh, so they're only anticipating about 200 children um, for this, for this site. Uh, Raleigh and Cary are the two municipal service operators in this area. Uh, and as they've been discussing this site and some of the things that could be done, uh, Raleigh has actually um, endorsed taking some existing sewer services in this area and through this project actually redirecting some of the sewer flow to take some pressure off of one of their facilities on Jones Franklin and actually redirecting that flow to the town of Cary. Um, the town of Cary was willing to go ahead and accept that and uh, they will in turn be annexing this property if approved for development. Um, so this is pretty much just a courtesy. Like I say, it doesn't really have much in the way of any impact to Garner directly, but again, because we are a signatory to the agreement, we uh, are required to vote one way or the other to approve or not, and so the motion before you recommended would be to authorize the mayor to sign the amendment. And I will answer any questions if you have them, and Ms. Parker is here from the school system as well, should you have any of her. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Treasonberg. Um, council members, any questions, comments? Ms. Parker, did you want to make any comments or are you just here if there are any questions? Is that right? Thank you. There being none, I move we approve Second Amendment to the Swift Creek Land Use Land Management Plan. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of voting for the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposition, no, and it is so ordered. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. 
So the uh, second item of business under new and old business is the facility naming policy that Mr. Roy Lance presented to us, uh, what is it, one meeting ago, two meetings ago, and the council heard your presentation, wanted to uh, think on that a little bit and consider it, and I believe you have made maybe a, a couple of minor wording tweaks uh, in it, yes, and so you're now prepared to present it back to the council for uh, possible approval, is that correct? Yes, that's right, thank you. Uh, and I, I don't really have anything uh, prepared in terms of a PowerPoint because it's, it's almost identical to what we went over last time. Uh, the only two changes that I did make uh, as a result of the feedback from council at, at the first discussion that we had uh, was uh, a change under the definition of facilities section because there were some questions, or a question anyway, about whether streets, a town owned street is something that would be eligible to be renamed. And, it was always the intention, but I did go ahead and clarify on here by spelling it out that that, that is an option. I did add, though, that there are a few additional implications just because you're, you know, when you change the name of a street, you're changing people's address on that street, and there's a, you know, a few extra steps we would have to go through, but um, certainly something that could be managed is just something that's a little bit more complicated than, you know, renaming an element of a park or something like that, but uh, covered by this policy, though, so we did want to clarify, make it make it clear that that was the intention. And the other change that I made was uh, on the, the last section, title procedure, there was a, a suggestion or, or an idea that in addition to having a public hearing, there could be a public comment period. And there, really, the, that list is just intended to give examples. And so there, you know, there's any range of different actions that council could take, of course. But that one uh, seemed to be a logical one to include in the list, so I added that as well. Other than those two changes, this is identical to what you all saw at the uh, <coughs> meeting, two meetings ago when we first discussed it. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions or you, know, you all can proceed with approving okay. it if you're so inclined. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roy Lance. And I would just quickly comment that uh, Ms. Beringer and I had a chance to uh, review this as the uh, Law and Finance Committee. We think it's a, a good policy and you've made some changes that probably have enhanced it some. So at this point, I'll open the discussion for any council members who desire to either ask questions or make comments about it. Hearing none, I'm inclined to call for a motion to approve this uh, facility naming policy as presented in our agenda packet and explained by Mr. Roylands. I move approval of the attached facility naming policy as presented. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a proper motion and a second. Any further discussion or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 There's no opposition. Thank you, Mr. Roy Lance, for your good work on this. Okay. Okay, uh, we are now to the section of our agenda under committee reports. And Ms. Beringer, since the first one is HR committee, if you don't mind, well, excuse me, oh, that's me Not and me. Mr. That's uh, yeah, that's, that's me <laughs> and Mr. Uh, Vance. And I would just report to the full council that uh, Mr. Vance and I had a meeting um, this past week, or it was last week, I guess, sort of an organizational meeting. And we will be uh, doing some interviews for vacancies on various advisory committees. I believe it's on the 11th and 12th of this month. And uh, the town clerk uh, or assistant clerk is in the process of notifying uh, those persons who will be coming in for an interview. And we would hope, uh, our committee would hope to uh, make some selections and have a recommendation back to the full council, ideally by um, uh, by the work session or at the end of the month so that people can start their terms consistent with the new fiscal year. So, uh, unless any council member have, have, has a question about that, we'll move to the manager's report. All right, you have the Garner info in the back of your packet. And then also just want to um, mention a couple of dates. You have a flyer in front of you about the volunteer appreciation banquet that will be held on uh, Thursday, June the 6th. Uh, four to six, so you're all invited to that. And then also starting that night, there's going to be the start of the uh, movies on the GPAC lawn, so a series of movies over the next few weeks. So we invite our, our residents and, um, to partake in that event. And um, the other thing 
I'd mention is the police department will be hosting a motorcycle rider skills class on Saturday, February the 5th, not February, but June the 15th. Um, skipping a whole half a year. Um, hmm. But that will be at 8.45 a.m. at the Garner um, Police Department. So just a couple of things to mention. And then um, only other thing I had was um, a discussion about how you would like to proceed on the budget and um, us getting closer to making a decision on what scenario or, you know, if you want to have a separate meeting or have some discussion now or how you would like to handle that. Okay. Any, any um, thoughts? Council, you've heard from the uh, town manager. I, because um, we had an opportunity a little earlier to have some discussion, but uh, what, uh, what say you? in regards to further budget discussion at this point or at a future date? I can schedule for the 18th. That's fine with me. 18th, okay. Anybody else? Comments? As part of the regular meeting, just at the, toward the end, um, it's fine. After the regular business or? You can do it on the front end. Or before. Uh, Do we need is to that? Oh, go ahead. go ahead. Do we need to discuss which scenario we would support now, or do we do that when we prepare to adopt the budget? Well, we had prepared. We were preparing by the calendar for the budget to be adopted on the 18th. So, I'm not sure how much discussion you have and want to be prepared to adopt it the same night. I'm not. So, and we, you know, what, what new is going to come up then? I, what? Yeah, I don't know. Mr. He Kennedy was, asked what new is going to come up, and uh, I think we've. Well, nothing, are you, are you, what, what do you need tonight? Um, well, typically, I think on that last date, we would have the budget pretty much decided on and have the final budget to present in its final state, and then would have the council vote on that. But. So do you need us to tell you what scenario we would prefer tonight? That would be ideal, but I'm <laughs> not going to rush you into making a decision. We'll just have to work around whatever schedule you want. Well, uh, let me just make this observation. Obviously, if if the council is not prepared to, to offer up a specific scenario tonight, and um, when you come with the budget on the 18th, um, there's still time, I guess, to to determine at that time, even though it may be inconvenient, uh, to um, to make tweaks in it. Even though the drop dead date is the end of the month, right? Even correct. though ideally we should pass it at our next council meeting. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, well, just I'll leave it open for another minute or two if. Uh, any council member wants to uh, go on record, uh, I think I have during the earlier discussions uh, indicated uh, my inclination on the scenarios that we have. And if any other council member wants to do that at this time, probably help the town manager in preparing for that meeting. If council members prefer not to do that, then um, I guess, uh, at least in my mind, the scenarios, as you've shown us, are still on the table. I can offer my uh, my input. I would prefer scenario number two. Okay. Two persons that, uh, or myself and Ms. Beringer at this point for that. Welcome back, Mr. Vance. Uh, based upon my knowledge, I prefer also 2.75, scenario number two. Okay. Any other council members care to weigh in or make comments? In the uh, spoiler, but I said we had our budget meetings and I'll stand by. I would not go above two cent and I won't uh, okay. support any one of the scenarios presented. The, the shortage this year was 1.452 and I told staff when I met with them that I would go about the two cent, I'd go halfway and the other half could be through fund balance and through cuts. And so I will not go above two cents. Last year changed the way that we uh, uh, 
supply the motor vehicle fee and we increase it from 15 to 30 dollars mm -hmm. uh, that's like a, a, a tax increase to people but we have changed our policy now those dollars are all dedicated to going to street and road improvement infrastructure improvement for the roads uh, so we have uh, because of the study uh, and that was mentioned by Michael here in the budget that we need to spend well over a million dollars a year to try to keep our streets the same uh, uh, level of degrade over the next decade and even at the snare we've got it would slightly come down but it would be increased dramatically over what we had been funding it which was a half million dollars or less so uh, had a form of a tax increase last year even though it didn't come on the tax bill it came every time you paid your registration fee so it could have been spread out over 12 months depending on how many vehicles you own but still you know if you own two vehicles that was 30 bucks that was like a three cent tax increase in a, in a way uh, but those funds are de dedicated specifically to road improvement so as i said i would not go above two cents so there's not i don't support scenario one two or three i reckon i su support scenario zero because i'm probably zero chance of what i support happening so anyway okay by the way, I just paid my registration fee on one of my vehicles uh, just a couple of days ago, and uh, that uh, oh, fee is obviously on there. Yeah. Let's repair one more pothole then. Yeah. Mr. Kennedy. Well, Scenario nine, two. I have nine vehicles with mm -hmm. my business and, and oh, okay. uh, personal yeah. side. Yep. You definitely uh, are aware of Impact. it for sure. Okay, I heard Mr. Kennedy. Uh, I support okay. Scenario two. So, Mr. Town Manager, does that uh, give you the guidance you think you need? That does. Uh, we'll bring back um, Scenario 2 as the base budget for your um, your um, approval or uh, discussion at the next meeting on the 18th. Okay. And it and can still vary from that if, if anybody's so inclined to make a good enough argument. And Michael, Mike? Is he, He's gone. Oh, is he gone? Okay, okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure he that was everything he needed to prepare the document so um but I, i'm pretty sure that'll yeah i mean he'll, he'll have the ordinance prepared based on that but it's always the council's discretion to make whatever sure whatever choice they'd like to make at the time and if that means we have to go back later and change the the ordinance um i mean you will still have voted on and approved a budget it just right. will need some modification to the numbers before it gets processed so we can handle it either way okay yeah so there's still an opportunity to uh to change it or tweak it until we make our final vote on it. But uh, for now, you have the guidance, I think, of yes. the majority of the council, okay? We'll have something um, specific to um, present to you. Okay. Any council member have any uh, further questions about that and where we're going next with the budget? Uh, I'd make one impromptu or a couple of comments. For the folks that are listening in and watching, uh, it sounds like it's real easy for us to adopt a tax rate increase. I don't think there's a soul here on the council that relishes that at all. You heard some of the, quote, justifications, one being that for a while now we've absorbed uh, medical costs, and that's uh, almost a million dollars change in, in, in the premium costs over the last three to four years. To several other things, the I won't bear to repeat those. I think what's really important is um, we've had increased costs. There's uh, staff has uh, the managers looked at ways to uh, to hold down costs. I think there's uh, room for in com in coming months and and years for us to continue to, to look for ways to minimize our costs. To put it in simple terms, is that uh, our tax revenues, have alarm tax revenues increased 5.5% this year. On average for the last three or four years, they've been increasing about 4%, maybe a little over. Our expenses have been averaging over 6% increase each year. We're on a diverging path. That's gotta be corrected. That's, that trend has got to change. There's uh, be plenty of discussions on how we might do that, but uh, those are just ongoing discussions regarding operations. Nobody takes this lightly, and uh, anybody that was not here tonight, um, please feel free to come and uh, 
see what uh, goes on at the next uh, at our meeting on the 18th. But uh, uh, tax rates are not popular. Sometimes they're necessary. This year seems to be one of those years. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Well stated. Uh, appreciate those comments. Okay. All right. Uh, I believe I'm ready to move to the attorney uh, report, if there is one. I'm on the agenda. I can mention that whenever. Okay. We'll come back around to that in just a few minutes. Okay. Uh, council reports are next. Um, I'll start with Mr. Singleton. Go that way and then circulate back this way. Mayor, I'm, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I mentioned uh, we had a former member of the town board, longtime resident and business owner here, Marianne Sparkman, passed away a few days ago. And uh, she served on the town council, uh, I think mainly in the late 70s and through the 80s. Also, as Mayor Pro Tem four times. So uh, I want to mention that someone who, had, who served and gave uh, several years to uh, Garner. She and her husband have you know, run and owned and operated along with their, their daughter, uh, Donna, for many, many, many years decades and uh, always supported baseball teams and other uh, community projects. So I just want to mention that uh, Ms. Sparkman is passing and uh, the years of service she gave to the town. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Singleton. Um, I didn't know her personally, but I've heard many good comments about her and I know many people in Garner uh, loved her and she was well respected. Uh, Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Uh, in one of the contracts we approved tonight for the uh, preliminary engineering on the realignment and extension of Jones Sausage Road, the, uh, the, the engineering firm provided a schedule of deliverables and uh, certain uh, milestones for, the, for their study. And one of those was September 20th when they'll uh, provide us a preliminary design or a preliminary plan that's a that's going to be a high water mark and I hope that's one that we can uh, run it that we can keep them on task so we can see that and uh, on schedule I wanted that one of the provisions was that they needed to be uh, notified by tomorrow for the authorization to proceed and if we can do that then we're holding our end of the bargain and Expect him to deliver on the 20th of uh, September. Second item, um, the Jurgen property. Uh, it's been uh, has had a haircut, mm -hmm. and it uh, looks looks a lot better. If we can find somebody that's got pruning shears and tackle the shrubbery, then uh, yeah, we got that on the schedule. That's good. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'll move to uh, Ms. Berger. Uh, yes, sir. I have three items. One, there is a dark green Toyota parked right in, on the street, right uh, inside Penny Street as you turn onto the street. It's been there for a week. There is a white cloth on it as if it's a vehicle in distress, but uh, I understand it's been reported once, but it's still there. Nobody seems to know who it belongs to, and nothing, nothing's being done to it. No, so it needs to it needs to be moved. Um, second is there there's a house at 1321 West Garner Road that looks like it has become the new city dump. So I would appreciate uh, code enforcement having a look at it. It's this is it's never looked wonderful, but it's way worse than not wonderful right now. And I had a citizen ask me today if we are planning or intending to do anything as remembrance of the. Conagra tragedy, 10 years coming up on June the 9th. So is that come across anybody's radar? That has not been not something that uh, That's I've what I told them. Yeah. Yeah. So we, at this late date, we probably will not do anything. It'd be difficult, I think, to schedule anything. Okay, that's all, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Vance. Oh, yes. Uh, first, I would say that on this past Saturday, one of the local churches in North Garland conducted a community day in which um, I'm proud to say that our police chief represented the, uh, uh, the police, police department in, in part of the outreach efforts, which I believe is very important when it comes to policing and, and the community getting to know who 
is on the force. Uh, thank you to the Town of Ghana Police Department. And uh, in reference to what uh, uh, Councilman Kennedy said about the conceptual plans for Jones Sausage Road, I think that should be one of the uh, priority projects uh, in, in the near future because we have a a good problem and that is growth and with growth comes traffic and with traffic it's going to require uh, doing things differently. One of the things we have to do differently is to look at how we can better uh, improve Jones Sausage Road so that that will not be a potential, well, a continuous bottleneck the way it is. Uh, and I look forward to seeing those conceptual plans in the very near future. And uh, that's all I have for the moment. Okay, thank you. So, um, thank you very much. I'll mention a couple of things. Uh, I believe the police chief's still here. I commend him and his staff on their, I believe it's their annual torch run that took place uh, this past week on a very hot day. But a uh, number of participants and uh, raised funds for a good cause. And I'm always encouraged to see uh, law enforcement uh, take the lead on that. And they do a good job every year. So thank you, sir, in your department. Um, this is probably a minor concern or complaint on Avisboro Road where there is construction going on there, I guess at the Georgetown Manor. Um, there's like a, is it a, it's like a steel um, plate, because they've plate. Yeah, how, how long does that have to be in place? Does anybody know? Well, until they, until they finish the project? It's probably an open cut in the road. Yes. So until they, I don't know what they're doing, you know, as far as connections, but it'll need to stay there until it's repaired. Okay. Yeah, somebody had asked me about that and I was wondering uh, how, how long that might be necessary there. Okay, all right. Um, I believe those are all the items I have and uh, we will prepare to go in a closed session. Uh, Mr. Vance, uh, you were uh, able to get the mayor home and so everything's okay there? Mayor's home, got home safely. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for, for assisting with that. Pleasure. So, uh, Mr. Attorney, I know we requested, I requested a closed session for a personnel manager, uh, manner, and I guess the citation uh, for your session is listed here, 143318 and 11A3. Yes, sir, yours would be 11A5. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we go into closed session pursuant to those uh, two state statutes statute stated by the attorney, 11A3 and 11A5. Thank you, Mr. Tingle. Is there a second? Second. One regarding litigation, one regarding personnel. Right. Say that. Okay. Did I hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It's all approved. We'll be in closed session. session uh, the council went into closed session to discuss two matters uh, one of those had to do with uh, litigation uh, uh, involving our attorney uh, we took no specific action on that matter and the second matter had to do with uh, council's responsibility relating to um, a personnel issue and at this point um, we uh, have not taken any official action there so, council members, unless there's any further business to come before this council, do I hear a motion that we adjourn? Is there right. a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And we are adjourned. Okay. All right.